AMD Fidelity FX Super Resolution episode 3 is coming soon. AMD has announced Radeon RX 7800 XT 16X and RX 7700 XT 12X GPUs. Moodthread's GPU driver now officially supports DirectX 11. And lastly, MSI has leaked Intel 14 generation core specs. This is Tech Track. Okay, so firstly we have a video cards article here and they're confirming that AMD FSR 3, they will be launching AMD Fidelity FX Super Resolution 3.0. Basically, it's the newer version of FSR and this time we have certain things that is coming with Fidelity FX Super Resolution. So firstly, we look into this picture here that has been leaked by video cards here as you can see they're quoting massive performance with FSR 3 and there are three things we need to consider here. Super Resolution upscaling. AMD fluid motion frames plus anti-lag plus. So the super resolution upscaling remains the same as the FSR 2 or 2.2, whatever you want to call it. But we now have something different, which is called AMD fluid motion frames. So what is that exactly? So basically, if you all know DLSS, Frame generation is exactly something like that and in this case AMD is naming it AMD fluid motion frames. Basically it is something like frame generation which generates fake frames to accumulate more frame rate of course. Not only that they're also bringing in anti-lag plus. Now I'm not sure if this is anti-lag the previous one or just a newer addition to the anti-lag plus maybe improving the anti-lag feature here so that is a possibility we are not sure but they do say it anti-lag plus meaning that could be an upgrade compared to their existing one. So if you look into the games here, we're looking at the Forspoken. This is the only leaked image we got from video cards here. And as you can see, in 4K ultra high ray tracing FSR off, you're getting 36 FPS, even though the game doesn't really look that great because Forspoken really failed to deliver the visuals or even the gameplay. But anyway, but if you look into the 4K ultra high RT FSR 3 performance mode, we're looking at 122 FPS. That's a huge gain here, of course, but we also need to keep that in mind. It's using the episode 3 performance mode. So I don't think in ultra quality mode, we will get this amount of uplift. But I'm guessing maybe double the amount of FPS we can gain from episode 3.0 using the frame generation. Because, you know, if you've already seen DLSS frame generation, it really delivers a lot of frame rate. Even though DLSS frame generation does impact in terms of latency and some cases there is some ghosting effect. Which, again, depends on the game. But... In this case, we're looking at Forspoken and one more game that has been added, which is Immortals of Avium. According to video cards here, there, these are the two games that we're looking at, Forspoken and Immortals of Avium, that will be getting the first support for FSR 3.0. So yeah, it's a really interesting thing that they're bringing in the frame generation tech, similar to DLSS 3.0. So we'll get to see what else they can bring with the FSR 3. And of course, maybe like in future run, they might bring in something like ray ring construction that just like DLSS, that is a possibility. And so we have another video cards article. In this case, we are looking at the RX 7800 XT and RX 7700 XT that has been revealed by AMD at Gamescom. So if you look here, this is the specs that has been leaked basically. AMD has showcased it. So if you look into it, we're looking at the AMD Radeon RX 7700 XT and for the compute units, we're looking at 54 AMD Radeon CUs here for RT accelerators, we're looking at 54 second generation of RT accelerators, so that's pretty good. AX AI accelerators is 108. The game clock for the RX 7700 XT is 2171 megahertz, and the boost clock is 2544 megahertz, so not bad. D6 of 12 gigs of memory, so over 10 gigs of VRAM, pretty good, I must say. Memory interface, we're looking at 192 bits. The memory speed is 18 Gbps and AMD Infinity Cache of 48 megabytes. Of course, second generation DisplayPort 2.1 support. AV1 encoding, of course, supporting. And the total board power, we're looking at 245 watts. So, not bad. As for AMD Radeon RX 7800 XT, we're looking at 60 CUs, 60 second generation RT accelerators, 120 AI accelerators. The game clock is a bit lower, 2124, and of course the boost clock is also lower, 2430 MHz. G6 of 16 gigs of VRAM, so again, ex as expected, because it's a 7800 series of card, so 16 gigs is expected. Whereas the memory interface, we're looking at 256 bit. The memory speed is 19.5, 64 megabytes of second generation AMD Infinity Cache, 2.1 display support, AV1 encoding, and the total board power we're looking at 
263 watts. There are some games that has been tested already. Of course, it's a first party from AMD here, so we're just gonna hover through. So Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, we're comparing basically the RTX 4070 here, and the RTX 4070 is being compared with the RX 7800 XT, so I'm kind of wondering that 7800 XT is not really a an 80 class gpu like the 4080 or something it seems like it is competing against the 4070 here which is kind of disappointing but either way we'll look, we're gonna look into it call of duty modern warfare 2 we're looking at 23 percent performance uplift here cyberpunk 2077 getting 23 percent again Hogwarts Legacy 15%, Watch Dogs Legion getting 13%, Overwatch 2 12%, Red Dead Redemption 2 getting 10%, Last of Us Part 1 9% gain, Russian Evil 4 with RT high settings, we're looking at 8%, Star Wars Jedi Survivor getting 5%, Counter Strike Global Offensive, basically CSGO is getting 5%, and Far Cry Ray Tracing on 4% increase, Forspoken only 2%, and Forza, Forza Horizon 5 Ray Tracing Extreme extreme settings 2%. As for Callisto Protocol, it's basically the same, and the losing titles we're looking at is Dying Light 2, losing by 9% 9, 9%. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, of course, minus 11%. Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales, of course, that's a pretty damn loss here. Of course, ray tracing is enabled, so kind of makes sense. F1 2023 and Doom Eternal, these are the games that are losing compared to the RTX 4070. As for the RX 7700 XT, that is being compared with the RTX 4060 Ti 16 gig. And in this case, there are some very big wins. Most cases, as you can see, all the games that I mentioned, the highest one is obviously Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 getting 31% increase. And the rest of the games are also pretty looking pretty good, over 20% on average, I could say, if you don't consider these Four games at the end because Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Miles Morales they perform the same as for F1 2023 and Doom Eternal they lose by 5% and 9% so yeah it seems like RX 7700 XT has better performance compared to the RTX 4060 Ti but then again the they're comparing with the RTX 4060 Ti I would want them to compare with the RTX 4070 and then for the RX 7800 XT would compare with the RTX 4080 you know but it seems like that won't be the case because they will lose definitely because they're it's kind of, it kind of shows you that they're comparing with the lower tier of the naming scheme because if you consider 7800 it should be compared with the RTX 4080 right but no it seems like it's they're comparing RTX 4070 same goes for the 7700 XT 4060 Ti they're comparing with so yeah it, it is kind of is disappointing in my opinion but either way these gpus are coming if they price it properly they might sell next up we have an update for the more spreads gpus basically the drivers update and they're now gonna be supporting direct x 11 titles basically if you look right here these are the new function that has been added and one of them is the top priority of course the support windows 11 direct x 11 so yes now direct x 11 titles will support more threads gpus basically the mtt s80 and mtt s70 these are the two cards that has existed now for the mood threads and these are the new game support we're getting as you can see the original god knife tower 2 street fighter 5 mission modern war 3 i don't even know what games are they're mentioning here because i've never heard it's gonna it seems like, it's like this is call of duty but no it's not call of duty it's, it's something different so these are the titles we don't even know most of the titles but there's one title football manager 2023 maybe i've heard about that but uh, most of the titles i've never heard about but yeah they will be supporting dx11 so that kind of is a plus i guess but i feel like they should need to increase the game support list more than whatever this is next up we have a big leak here and as you can see this is coming from msi of course dark mont has leaked it so let's look into it basically msi has removed it from the youtube channel because if you look into the video here that video is not available anymore which is kind of fair because they leaked it accidentally oops so if you look into here msi has leaked this is that 14th generation intel core nda do not share well, they just did. And if you look closely here, 10th generation is Raptor Lake S and the 14th generation is Raptor Lake S refresh. We already know that. No architectural changes. Same Intel 7 10 nanometer process, of course. And on average, they're saying that it's 3% faster than 13th generation same segment SKU. So on average, we're looking at like if you're comparing i5 13600K or i5 4600K, it will be on average 3% faster. But there's a huge gain here is for the i7 14700K because that's getting 17% faster compared to the 3700K and the only reason that is g gaining that much is because we have extra e-cores and as you can see right here 
i7 3700K 8 comes with 8 performance and 8 efficiency cores, but the i7 14700K is getting 8 performance and 12 efficiency cores, so 4 efficiency core increased. As for the other SKUs, it remains the same. So that is the reason why i7 14700K is getting more performance uplifts. So it seems like it's better value, I guess, because most of the other processors on average is 3% faster. Doesn't make it that much appealing in my opinion, to be honest with you. But maybe the i7 14700K is because 17% faster on average on the multi-thread performance, not bad, you know.